if you don't take Mira in, I will completely destroy your family's reputation. Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cass Plays and welcome back to the night generation of my medieval legacy challenge. So you'll recognise this is not Gerard and Christina's house. This is, minus the Christmas decorations, uh, so much and la- Dame, I was going to say lady, but she's not a lady, she's definitely not a lady. Dame Cherish Kimball's house. I wanted to touch base with this family first because obviously we've had a lot of like back and forth on whether or not merch would toss out Cherish when he realised that the baby wasn't his. And it's all coming to a bit of a head because I aged her up into a toddler and she is basically a clone of her father. She's got no features in common with her mum. I thought if she had her mum's brown hair, brown eyes, that Merch would probably just accept that it was, you know, she just took after her mum and that's fine. She has her dad's hair and her dad's eyes, which is really unusual because I find usually Sims genetics will kind of mix and match. It'll do a bit of both. She's got the colouring of Lord Jackson, 100%. The cat's pretty much out of the bag here. I'm just going to get the baby. Oh, by the way, the baby is Mira because I looked up female forms of the name Merch and Mira is the female form of it. It'd be like Michael versus Michaela. It's Merch and Mira. Cherish particularly picked that name because she wanted the girl to be named after her quote unquote father as part of her kind of effort to make it so he would accept the child. Now the thing is as far as sentiments go to his wife I think they're actually both enamored with each other. Yeah they're deeply connected. It's a close sentiment. When they both woke up they were both feeling flirty because they were enamored with somebody nearby. You gonna sit and talk to your daddy? See look look at this. Do they look anything like one another? Even the tiniest bit. And he's so sad. He's just like, he wants this little girl to be, yeah, go pee. He wants this little girl to be his, but he's just so sad because he's like, she's not mine. What do I do? And he's really conflicted. And as some of you rightfully observed in the comments, and a hundred percent, I agree. He's a knight. He has sworn to uphold the chivalric code. Come inside, sweetheart. Oh, and she's feeling sad too. She knows it's coming. She knows it's coming, you guys. I think I'm going to start with asking about other sims if I can do that with her ask about another sim I really want to have him ask about oh he can he can ask about Jackson I'm gonna have him ask about Jackson because he's like okay Cherish it's time for you to be honest with me why are we following the child we were not having this argument in front of her he's like so what happened she's saying she's in love with him okay that's not actually going to be what she's saying because obviously They had a high romance because they woohooed a lot, but she didn't love him. She's like, okay, I knew you were going to ask this. I've been, I've been dreading this moment. And he's like, why did you make me bring it up? She's like, I was hoping you wouldn't. So he's saying Miria's his child, right? And she's like, yes, yes, she is. And he was a horrible Lord. He took advantage of me when I worked for him and I didn't have anywhere to go. And I was so scared. He was horrible. He was violent. Just ask his, ask his widow. He was a horrible, violent man. And he did things to me. You don't understand. And she's, she's totally hamming it up. And yes, the visual cues you're seeing are accurate. He's now saying, so you lied to me. You said, you said she was mine. And she's like, that's because I saw you and I fell in love with you. And I knew that if you knew I was pregnant with another man's baby, you would never be interested in me. And I was so scared. I'm going to have her apologize. The game thinks she needs to apologize, which I don't know why you think she needs to apologize, but clearly she does. She's like, I'm so sorry. I was so scared. And he's like, look, I understand that, but you know me. And you know, if you just told me the truth from the start, I, I would have been sympathetic. And then he's left, I guess. He's gone to go give himself a pep talk. That's probably a good thing because he's probably feeling, as well as sad, he's also feeling angry at her for lying. And he's got enough control of himself that he's like, I'm just going to go calm down for a minute and have a cry, have a big manly cry in the mirror. There is a little bit of calculation in the way she's playing this, honestly. Is there anything she can do? She's going to give him a gloomy compliment. So she's like, Merch, I understand if you don't trust me anymore and I understand if you would want to cast me out but please please don't please I'm so scared of what will happen to me and Mira and she's being actually honest here at this point she's like genuinely afraid if he casts her out she'll be like 
rejected by a knight. Everyone will know. It'll be a total scandal and she'll have no money. She won't be able to get a job. They'll plunge straight into poverty. So she's genuinely afraid he's going to cast her out. And she's like basically begging him and he's a good guy. Okay, like when we look at his trades, I'll just show you guys real quick. He's a goofball, romantic and active. He is genuinely in love with her. Yeah, it was artificially created, but he is in love with her. And he's like, I don't want to cast you out, but everyone is going to look at Mira and know she's not mine. And everyone is going to talk about that. And she's like, well, what if there's a way that we can make that not be a problem? He's like, well, I don't see how. She's like, what if I can convince the Honeycuts that Mira is their family's shame and they take her? It would break my heart to have her not with us. But what if I can do that? Would that be okay? Poor little Mira's upstairs feeling really sad. Maybe she heard them. He's torn because he also loves Mira. But he's like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do here. And she's like, well, there's something else I need to tell you. I didn't want to bring it up until you made your decision one way or the other. She's going to tell him that she's pregnant because obviously girl knows how to keep the man interested in her. Like, she's had a lot of practice at this. It's how she kept Lord Jackson from not casting her off ages ago. So she is pregnant. She's like, I am pregnant. It is your baby. What are you... What are you... Dude, are you the one pranking these toilets? No, please don't. He's basically asking her to swear to him that she's been faithful. And the thing is, she has. So she can hand on heart, say to him, it's definitely his child. What she's going to try and do, and she is going to try and seduce him now, because even though she was feeling nauseous and all kinds of symptoms earlier, she, again, she knows, girl knows how to, you know, wrap a man around her finger. The plan is she's going to go to the Honeycuts and say, Mira is Lord Jackson's. He took advantage of me and I'm going to tell everyone unless you take this child because my husband doesn't, he, he thinks she brings shame to him. So that is her plan. I'm actually going to play this as her, not Christina and Gerard. She's going to pick her up. Because the thing is that Cherish does love Mira. Well, she's fond of Mira. (laughs) They're kind of friends. She's fond of Mira. Cherish does have feelings about Mira. It's not like she's totally heartless, but she is evil. And if Mira's presence caught, see, now she's feeling sad. I kind of feel bad for Cherish. Although she's brought this all on herself. Well, most of it. I mean, Jackson did. He did take advantage of her. If she refused him, she'd get cast off. So she didn't say no. I was, she was in a bind. I do feel bad for her. But she's 100% willing to have her oldest daughter be raised by someone else if it means that she and the child she's pregnant with now have the security of being with a man who's married her and loves her. But I also think, especially given the way The Sims works, she's actually fallen in love with Merch as well, despite herself. She's like, I can be better. I can turn over a new leaf. This seems like the time to change her aspiration, doesn't it? I can be better. I can be a perfect wife. So what I might do is put her on the soulmate aspiration. She's decided she's going to be the perfect wife to her husband. She's going to be the perfect mother to his child or children if she has future children or if she's pregnant with multiples, which I'm not saying either way. I did look. (laughs) But if you want to leave baby name suggestions, feel free. All right, they've arrived. I just had to get her in the house. She's come in and done a rude introduction to Celeste because she's like, look, you know, I'm here to see Christina basically barging into the house because she's she's feeling really anxious. I'm going to have have her brush off Celeste because she doesn't want to talk to the help. Now, Christina's actually in the kitchen setting fire to it, apparently. Christina, stop. You have no cooking skill. She's actually going to go in here. Now, she does not like this family and Christina and Gerard don't like her. Basically, she's confronting Christina and saying, we need to talk. Christina's like, what? Whoa, what are you even doing in my house? I don't want you here. And she's like, well, you know what I didn't want? Your father, Lord Jackson, to ruin my life. And I'm going to say, uh, we're going to chew her out. She's basically saying, you know, your father took advantage of me. Mira is his child. You just have to look at her to see that that's the case. And she's being really quite confrontational. Now my husband is threatening to cast me off because the baby isn't here. And it's not my fault. And I'm pregnant again. How on earth am I going to manage your younger sister and his children? They now despise each other. Christina's like, well, these all sound like a you problem. (laughs) 
And she's like, I will tell everybody what your father did. And Christina's like, you wouldn't dare. She's like, I will. I'll ruin his reputation. I will ruin your mother's reputation. I will tell everybody all of your father's suspicions about how she was having an affair with your uncle Victor. And I will tell everyone your father's suspicions that you are not Jackson's child. And this is totally shocking to Christina because she's never heard this before. She's like, no, your father believed that your mother had an affair with Victor and that you are Victor's child. You're not even Jackson's. So if you don't take Mira in, I will completely destroy your family's reputation. All of the scandals that Jackson told me about and the scandals he committed will be out in the open for everybody to hear. And Christina's feeling completely in a bind here. She's shocked that the person she thought was her dad believed that he wasn't. She's shocked that, even though she kind of suspected it, she's shocked that the rumours about a relationship between Elizabeth and Victor went back to before her birth because she thought it was more recent when she, as a child, went to live with Victor and her mum for a while. She thought that was maybe when the affair started because she did suspect maybe something was going on there. But that was after, in her mind, Jackson had already done the wrong thing with Cherish and been an abuser, basically. So she kind of thought she was justifying Christina's behaviour that way. But she also doesn't want her family's reputation to be destroyed. Those are some harsh words, Dame Cherish. I don't believe that Je- Lord Jackson is that bad of a person really though the upshot of all of this is christina is gonna say i need to talk to gerard i can't just take this child in without consulting my husband and he's not here leave mira with us for now and we'll say she's a cousin of the honeycut family that we're taking in (gasps) that's so funny suspicious mischievous soul nearby an acquaintance of celeste is around not the nice type of acquaintance who you want to know more about more however but rather the type that you want to avoid celeste barely knows that other sin but their aura of mischief irks her i'm guessing that's a first impressions thing Celeste's first impression is that Cherish is untrustworthy. She nailed that. And Cherish's first impression is that Celeste is stuck up. I love that. You know, she's got airs. She's getting in my way, basically. But I'm actually going to have her go home because she's leaving her child. She's probably going to go home and cry. I actually feel really sad. Stranger danger. Oh, honey. I feel so sad for Mira. She's just been totally cast off. Oh, Gerard is here. He obviously went to work and then came home. So they obviously need to have a talk. I have no clue where I am going to put Mira. Can I get you to actually just have a nap on the couch? I'm going to get him to come in here and he's going to have a talk to his wife and be like, what was all that about? Come in. There's shouting. And suddenly we have an extra toddler in the house. So she's explaining the whole thing and how she feels like she's obliged to Mira to get her away from Cherish is also part of her motivation. Like, yeah, she's concerned about her family's reputation, but she also is worried that being raised by Cherish would be bad for the child that is either her sister or alternatively her cousin, depending on if she believes Cherish or not. I'm sorry, we only have one potty. I wasn't... Ah, She'll go soon, I swear. He's saying to Christina that if she wants to take Mira in, of course, he will do that, basically. He's not going to refuse her. Uh, He's decided that Cherish is the enemy of all things. And is evil. In fact, I'm actually going to set this to minus 100. He disliked her, but now he despises her because of what she just did. Okay, well, now we have a bit of a problem in that this room is tiny. I need another toddler bed. Oh my God, I have no money. It's because I bought a dresser. I bought a bookshelf for here. I bought another one for here. A dresser for in here. And then I ran out of money. Joseph, you've got like really good energy at the moment and it's not raining can i get you to whip up a machine that bathtub here's one we prepared earlier i'm basically just cleaning up all of the messes my sims made while i wasn't in control of them and then i'm actually gonna have mira nap on the couch it's the best i can do now i am gonna have them actually adopt her as their care dependent but i don't know if they can yet I can't believe I did this to myself. So in terms of ages, I just have to confirm they line up. So Eleanor is the oldest of the three. There's not a huge age gap between, There's like, it's saying a three-day age gap, which is probably about right. It's probably more like two, but three is fine. Mira is in the middle, and then there's Jacob. And Jacob's birthday is actually today. Like, I didn't have enough problems. Are we going to have three toddlers at once? Kill me now. <laughs> Poor little orphan baby. I mean, she's not an orphan, but when your mum casts you off like that, you might as well be. I mean, I get Cherish did exactly what she needed to do. 
she's evil. I got to play it the way that the, the traits worked out. The thing is, I will tell you guys, I think I downloaded the Honeycuts originally from the gallery, but Sylvester and Victor and Jackson were not my sims originally they were gallery sims i think i may have renamed them i can't remember sometimes i do that i just randomly change the names because if someone puts a household on the gallery and it's like from a tv show i've never seen i wouldn't realize and then you guys would be like oh that's the ones from the show and it would just be a bit immersion breaking so i renamed them but they were gallery sims so i didn't give jackson evil he had that when i got him cherished likewise was from the gallery <laughs> she was a maid a medieval maid and i was like they need a maid downloaded her popped her in Oh, she's evil too. And especially because uh, there'd already been a romance very early on between Victor and Elizabeth, because I think Victor has romantic and Elizabeth was unhappy with her evil husband. I had them have an affair and Christina was the result. And because Cherish and Jackson were both evil, it struck me. Cherish would 100% sleep with her boss if he seemed interested to secure her position She's over here talking to the dinosaur or the dragon because she had one of these at home and it's the only constant in her life. She might even think it's the same one, poor little bean. All right, let's sell that bathtub. I desperately need some furniture, especially because I'm actually going to need two toddler beds because we're about to age up the baby as well. So we'll do that and then I'll probably end this part. It's like three in the morning. I guess none of them could sleep. It does make sense because it was a very traumatic evening. What we're going to do is get some bedding sorted. I'll get bedding for Mira and Jacob. I'm going to have to do something about bedding arrangements because once these are single beds, boy howdy. But for now, I'm just going to get the toddler beds. I'll do any renovations, like bigger renovations between parts, I think. Mira is the one that's the real victim in all of this. It's fair to say all of the honeycut children. So Christina, Matthias and Mira are all victims of the drama of the previous generation in one way or another. Okay, little baby, read you to sleep. Her little lip it was wobbling as she was falling asleep. I am so sad. I'm going to change that diaper, remove the onesie and I'm actually going to age Jacob up as well. We'll give him his makeover. I'll show you guys what he looks like. Because obviously he's our heir. He'll either be redheaded or blonde, I expect, and blue or green eyes. I think there are choices. <laughs> Sorry. You know, but that's all right. So we're going to remove that. There's been a lot going on. I don't know how long I've been recording for. Obviously, there's been a bit. Oh, I hate it how they do this. All right. He is inquisitive. He's inquisitive about, you know, the world. And he's a blondie. Hey, cutie. And he put himself in green, too. Cute. He got yellow eyes. It's a bit weird, though. I don't know where that came from. If they've got two different types of CC eyes, the game might not recognize the colors and just have randomly picked one. So it's probably tried. It's gone for the type that Christina's are, but not the color. I could make them blue and make him a complete carbon copy. It's meant to be hazel, isn't it? I could make them the next green along. I'm going to leave them as this yellowy green. It's like... A combination of what he had and his dad's. If you guys think I should make them the blue, because I think that's probably what the game was trying to do. I think it just got confused. So yeah, I'll give him his makeover real quick and then I'll show you guys when I'm done. I've given Jacob his little makeover. I actually kept the hair the same because his dad's got kind of wavy hair. And especially if he's going to have not his dad's hair or eyes, <laughs> kind of like something of his father's other than, you know, face structure and things we'll find out as he gets older. But I thought it was super cute. So I just kept it. Again, let me know what you think of the eye color. Obviously, I struggle with that. I've kind of kept him in greens. I don't know why. Just was feeling it. So that is his everyday. We've got his formal wear. Then we've got sleep wear. That is his party wear. Not green. And also not green. That's his swimwear. Then we've got hot and cold. So I will also, while we're here... Just give you a quick closer look at Mira. So this is her adorable little face. Because she's a similar social tier to Eleanor, I think I've put her in quite similar clothes. Because I this that dress, there's like, I've got three different dresses by this creator. And they are kind of the only long dresses I have for toddlers. Poor little Mira. I feel very bad for what I have done to her. She's going to grow up in a happy family. So there's that. It's just that the transition will be difficult. I'm also going to change her surname because the story is that she is an orphan of a distant honeycut or like they couldn't raise her because they were plunged into poverty and there'll be rumors around that, I expect. But they're claiming she's a honeycut. She's clearly a honeycut. You just got to look at her. Uh, so yeah, 
that's the rest of her outfits. It'll be interesting to see how the relationships develop between them all. Eleanor, she does love toys. She's not shown any signs of being possessive of her toys yet, but she's also had no competition. So it's possible, I don't even know how that custom trait works, but it's possible if another child is playing with a toy, she might get mad. So it could be at Mira or her brother. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to do some renos to try and figure out how to make this family fit. But here we have little Jacob being all adorable and stuff. Our future religious boy. Love it. And she's still mad. I need to get her to go calm down. She's got nine hours of being angry. I'm definitely going to do that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here. Let me know what you guys think of everything. I know you guys were super engaged with the Cherish drama and had some really awesome suggestions for different ways that it could play out. So thank you so much for that. I was actually considering some of the other options, but when I aged up Mira and saw what she looked like... I was like, Merch is a good guy and he is in love with his wife and she's also pregnant with his baby, which makes it even harder for him now. But it puts him in a really difficult position. When Mira is meant to be his daughter, no one will believe that. No one will look at Mira and believe that. The scandal is like instantaneous and ongoing for the rest of Mira's life. So I think Merch would also recognise that having Mira be raised in the Honeycutt house the Honeycutt house more broadly, not by Matthias, but specifically here. It's better for Mira as well. I think at least that's what he's telling himself. And it is definitely true. I can't imagine that Cherish is going to be super involved in Mira's life. Like Gerard and Christina both hate her. So they're not going to want her over here. I'd love to hear what you guys think. My poor Sims have had a rough time of it recently. I'll try and let them have a bit more calm in their lives. We'll see how it goes. Oh, one other thing. I'm going to say, hang on, two other things. We're probably going to lose Celeste in the next part just to ruin everything even more. But Vivienne, so Gerard's sister had her child with Hammond because she was actually pregnant at the end of that video montage that I did. So if I now go across, not, not Vivian, Genevieve, her and Hammond had a son. I had to age him up straight away. He would actually be the same age as... Well, a little bit younger than Jacob, actually, because Christina was like start of third trimester with Jacob when Genevieve got pregnant. So a little bit younger, but I had to age him up because of the whole they live on a retail lot thing. So he is already a toddler. I'll just keep him a toddler for a bit longer. He's very, very cute. I'll put a picture of him up on screen so you guys can see it just before the end of this part. I'm going to wrap this one up here. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe. You know the drill. Don't forget to wash your hands and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.